How's it going guys? My name is Tyler Anderson and welcome back to the Mystery Tackle Box channel. You know, the goal of this channel is to help you guys become better anglers and the goal of my YouTube channel, Tyler's Real Fishing, is also to help you guys become better anglers. So if you guys are not subscribed to both channels, MTB and my own, make sure you guys do that at the end of the video. But today's topic is going to be about docks. You know, I've been fishing docks my entire life. Whether I was a small kid sitting on my grandpa's lap throwing a bobber and a piece of bread for bluegill off the dock, uh, or now with a bass boat like this one uh, that I get to travel around the country and just fish all different types of fisheries, docks are constant. I fish docks anywhere and everywhere that I can because they hold bass. And so I wanted to create a condensed video for you guys uh, with all the information that you could possibly need to, in order to understand how to best skip a dock, avoid backlashes, and of course, catch some bass. So let's jump into it. So there are so many different kinds of docks. There are wooden docks, there's metal docks, there's shallow docks, there's deep docks, there's permanent docks, there's floating docks, there are marinas, there are tiny little floaty things with diving boards. The amount of docks out there is basically endless. There's huge ones, small ones, everything in between. But the one thing that's constant about them is that bass live in and around them at basically all times of the year. Uh, and so I see so many people that are first beginning gravitate towards docks because it's an obvious piece of structure. We know that bass live around structure, so they've got to live around a dock, and they do. But one thing that I, I think especially a lot of people do not clue in on is that everybody else also fishes the same docks that you fish. And so if you are to fish them in a subpar manner with subpar lures and equipment, you're not going to catch as many fish as the guy who is able to do it better than you can. So the goal of this video is to help you guys become better at skipping docks. So we're gonna sit down for a quick second, talk about the gear you need, then we're gonna hop up on the front deck and show you guys exactly what I do when I skip docks. And then of course, we're gonna catch some fish and have a good time. So we could sit here and talk for hours and hours about the type of lures that you can skip under docks. But the one thing that is constant between all of them is that they have a skipping surface. Skipping a lure is just like skipping a rock. You'll see when I hop to the front deck to show you guys how I skip, it is the same motion as throwing a frisbee, throwing a rock, it is the same exact motion. And so you wanna get a lure that is able to skip very well underneath docks and of course catch fish when it's under there. Now we all know that docks have cables, they've got posts, and so the first thing is that your lure has to be weedless. So you gotta throw a, a Texas rig soft plastic or a jig. That's really the only two lures you can skip under docks. I guess you can make the argument for a frog, but I'm talking about subsurface lures uh, in this video here. I think the tips will also apply if you wanted to skip a frog. Um, but I'm talking about so Texas Rig soft plastics, you know, weedless soft plastics, and weedless jigs. Uh, some of my favorite soft plastics to skip are a Cinco, a Fluke, um, anything with not a whole lot of appendages. As you skip it underneath the uh, under the dock and it's kind of gliding along the water, any sort of extra limbs on your soft plastic, like a creature bait, are going to inhibit the skipping action. So a Cinco Fluke, really the only two lures that I actually skip under a dock. But the one that I skip the majority of the time that I think catches more fish and bigger fish than any other dock skipping lure, and that is a dock skipping jig. This here is a standard flat-headed style jig, uh, but the one thing that makes this jig important, and I'll have a few jigs linked in the description that you guys can purchase at Carl's Bait and Tackle that are like this. But the thing that's very important is that the head has a little bit of a flat design to it, and the line tie is horizontal, not vertical. And so the reason why especially the line tie being horizontal is important is because when, you're, when your jig is kind of hopping along the bottom and it hits a cable or a, a, a dock post or a metal beam, you want your jig to be able to hit it and slide over and not get stuck. Whereas if you had a jig with the, the line tie being vertical, not horizontal, you'd hit the post and it would spin sideways and oftentimes we get hooked a lot more than this style jig here. There are tons of different jigs out there for this application. I prefer to throw more compact jigs uh, and of course ones that have not a whole lot of skirt because I don't want to, like I said, a lot of appendages to be flipping out there um, to you know slow down the lure and give it drag as it skips across the water. You also want to have a trailer that doesn't have a whole lot of action too. So this here is just a standard, you know, two craw trailer. Uh, sometimes I'll throw uh, a, a trailer that doesn't even have any claws on it. Like the, uh a beaver style bait, like this one here. It doesn't really have a whole lot of appendages to give it action, um, but it gives it enough bulk and enough flatness to be able to skip on the water. So just like you're, you're picking a good rock to skip, you wanna pick a good combination of jig and trailer to get it to skip well 
on the water. Another key aspect when it comes to skipping docks is your rod, reel, and line combo. Uh, I prefer to throw a little bit longer of a rod and a little heavier of a rod just to have a lot of backbone to absolutely wrench these fish out because as I'll talk about, I get my jig so far back there that when I set the hook, I have to drag that fish past some absolutely nasty stuff and that is why I like having a, a heavier rod. This here is a 7-4 heavy fast action with a little bit of a softer tip to be able to skip that lure well. Uh, then I have a fast gear ratio reel. This is an 8-3-1. to one. You want to be able to get the fish out of there before it can take you sideways and get you stuck in somebody's propeller uh, underneath their dock. And then I have 20 pound fluorocarbon line. Sometimes I'll throw braided line if it is uh, the water clarity is dirty enough. But right now we have super clear water and so I want to match my jig color, a green pumpkin, to the, uh, the forage they're eating, whether it's the crawfish or the bluegills they're eating underneath the docks. And I also want to match my line size uh, and line type to how clear the water is. So that is enough talk. I say we hop on the front deck and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about skipping a jig. And of course, show you guys some awesome fish catches. Now, as I approach a dock like this one you see here on my chest mount, I'm gonna power pull down just so I can show you guys exactly what I do. So this dock here is not necessarily a, a big dock. It's actually a pretty dang small dock. And there's really only one pocket the fish can probably be sitting in. And it's that one right there in between the right post and the middle post. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rod. I'm gonna get about, I don't know, a foot to a foot and a half of line off the tip. I'm going to do what's called a roll cast, which is where you basically roll in a clockwise, or if you're doing a backhand cast, or you're left-handed, counterclockwise direction. And so I'm gonna roll in the clockwise direction like this, and I'm gonna let the lure fly at like a, almost like a frisbee flick trajectory. So if you guys ever played ultimate frisbee or disc golf, you'll know that a flick is when you throw the disc like this in a forehand like that. And so the, the frisbee flick and the skip are literally almost the exact same motion. And so like I said, get about a foot and a half of line, get about 20 to 25 feet away from the dock. I'm gonna do a little roll cast and let the lure fly underneath the dock and thumb it, which means that as the line is going out, I'm feeling my line with my thumb to make sure that none of that line kind of gets uh, de-spooling, and gets a backlash. Every few casts, you'll get a few little uh, pieces of loose line like that. And then, of course, I'm gonna work the jig back. And in a minute, I'm gonna show you guys how I work my jig underneath docks in multiple different uh, scenarios. But like I said, about a foot and a half of line, maybe two foot if you're, if you're feeling frisky. I'm gonna do a little roll cast, and I'm gonna let the jig fly underneath there. And what I do at the end as I thumb it is I kind of like push my, uh, my, my wrist and my thumb up with the rod and for some reason I've just kind of found that that allows the jig to fly straighter and also get a lot less backlashes over time so doesn't seem like there's a fish there but oftentimes do dock fish will uh, hide in crazy to reach places so I'm gonna do another one just like that underneath the dock itself and uh, usually that'll get you one so it's definitely a motion that uh, you cannot get right away. You can't just wake up and decide, I'm gonna go skip docks today. If you've never done it before, uh, you have to learn the motion. And I think everybody skips docks a little bit differently. I, I guarantee you, Andy Montgomery, one of the best dock skippers uh, on the professional tour, he probably skips docks in definitely better than I do, but different than I do. Uh, but it all takes just a, a touch and a feel. Uh, of course, everybody's rod and reel combos are gonna fit a little bit different in their hands. But like I said, foot and a half, two feet of line. But if you're a little bit farther away from the dock, of course, you're gonna have to give more power which is more risky but as long as you do the set the uh, the setup right just like that you will end up with almost no backlash every time now will you get backlashes of course you will i'm going to get tons of backlashes in this video and y'all are going to see but the good thing about dock skipping is that if you get a backlash usually it's not one that's so bad that you can't pick it out usually you know the reason why you thumb your spool is in case you have a bad skip you're able to stop the reel before it uh goes into complete mayhem. I say we flip a few more docks and then show you guys how I'm working my jig. And we're a few docks later, but one thing that I forgot to mention about skipping is that you wanna make sure that your lure lands uh, a few feet in front of your target at a good trajectory, just like skipping a rock. So if you were to try to skip and your lure skips too close to the boat, you're either gonna have your lure jump really high as if you skipped a rock really close and it bounced up as they always do, um, or your lure is just gonna jam in the water, you're gonna get a bad backlash. So if I'm going under this dock here, or under this pontoon, I wanna land it right at the edge of the pontoon, a few feet in front, that way I can make the, uh, the best cast possible underneath there. As y'all can see from this shot right here, we have uh, quite a bit of grass in this lake. We got eelgrass, we got uh, coontail, we have cabbage, a lot of different types of grasses, and they actually grow underneath the docks as well. So in a grassy dock situation, I'll skip it up there, let us sink to the bottom, and of course it's, gonna, it's a foot and a half, two feet deep, so it's not gonna take that long. I'm gonna get my line tight, and I'm gonna kinda hop it like this. One, two, three, reel. One, two, one, one, 
one, two, three, just kind of like quick hops because you imagine that that jig is sitting down there in the grass and you kind of have to rip and pop it out of that grass to uh, not just get the fish's attention because of course they're going to see it under there, but really just to get it out of the grass. The fish is going to have a better chance of getting it in his mouth if you get that jig out of the grass a little bit by an inch or two. Um, but like I said, I don't want to move it too much because I don't want to scare away the fish. Sometimes dogfish are kind of spooky, lots of people walking around. If you can present your jig in there and it with a smooth skip, not a whole lot of noise, and just a little bit of shakes, enough to get that fish to react and eat it, that is my favorite way to catch them on docks like this. Now, if you're fishing around docks that are uh, in, in a rocky situation, underneath docks that have rock or sand bottom, I'm usually doing more of a drag with kind of shakes. Occasionally I'll give it a hop, but uh, that's my two main retreats when it comes to the jig under the docks. Grass, hop it out, uh, sand and rocks, wood, anything like that, more of a, a slow drag with some shakes. Yahoo! Oh no! Ah, little guy! Two in a row, two in a row. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be joking me, good grief. That doc literally had two sitting there. I flipped on that one and he ate it too. Oh, that was awesome. How about a third one, huh? Is there a third bass under there? There he is, got him. <laughs> yes, sir. That's the cool thing about dockfish is that usually they will eat a second time if you get them to bite the first and miss them, as long as you don't sting them with the hook. And that one got them. Oh yeah. Let's keep going. Gosh. That was one. That was a fish. That was a fish. He bit me and ran sideways. There he is. Yes. Oh, not a bad one. Not a bad one, folks. Oh. 20 pound line gets him up in here. Let's go. Look at that. Skipping jig to the roof of the mouth. And that right there is uh, how it's done, boys and girls. Like I said, you have to get your jig in places that nobody else gets it. And right there, in that exact situation, no one else, I guarantee, has gotten their jig in the back corner of that dock for a very long time. And uh, I was rewarded with such a specimen. So I love it. I love it. Oh, come on. Let the choir say amen. Ah, ah, it's just, ow. Oh, almost impossible of a hook set. I'm gonna wait till I get to the other side of the dock and make the flip that I want right there. Perfect. There he is. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you all uh, learned something and you enjoyed me catching some fish. Again, if you're not subscribed to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And if you are not subscribed to my channel as well, Tyler's Real Fishing, I love doing this multiple times a week for you guys, showing you how to catch more and more bass. So uh, with that one, we'll see you all next time.